we're ready to go with our next guest on FT Live. Let's bring in rookie sensation, World Series champ, who I think pulled over, special for us, Evan Carter, <laughs> joining us right now on FT Live. How you doing, Evan? Doing great. How are you all? I'm good. Did you pull over? So I actually was in a meeting already, so I was just in the parking lot. So not pulled over, but uh, we're in a parking lot. <laughs> okay, perfect. That's a fair. Me- a I meeting? Like- what, what kind of meeting we got? <laughs> trying to make sure i'm not losing my dang money just there with you go advisor, not being stupid so we're, i, uh, I, trying to I was hoping that i was hoping that's what you're going to say because younger yep. ball players need to take a page from you right now and that should be number one <laughs> priority right now getting making sure you got christmas gifts under those trees for the family that's you know right. what i mean that's right that's right <laughs> hey i want to start it off by this real quick you came in to the playoffs i did the game there in tampa the first game Everybody, you know, I, I got to meet you in there, man. And I just want to say congratulations first and foremost. That was unbelievable. Um, what makes – you you were just so comfortable. It just seemed like – it felt like you've been there for years. Is there something, you know, from your upbringing or just the way you go about your business, it looked like you knew what you were doing and you nothing really, you know, scared you or made you uncomfortable? Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, you know, I think that – a lot of that kind of comes a credit to just the people who I was around, um, the teammates that I've had, the managers throughout the minor leagues. And then, you know, once I made it to the big leagues, just, gosh, the way the locker room accepted me in, made me feel comfortable, you know, it's it's a big credit to them. I mean, they could have made me feel, you know, out of place and they didn't. Um, and so making me feel comfortable and making me feel welcome to play the way that I always had was a big thing for me. So that really helped a lot. Was that for real? Like, you looked calm. You played calm. How were you feeling on the inside? Were, were there some bubble guts? Did you get some Did you get some runs to the to the porta potty there? <laughs> yeah, you know, I think that uh, my, my debut game was probably the, the most nervous I've ever been. Um, I didn't stretch. I just kind of went out there, and I, I could run through a brick wall. Um, <laughs> but uh, after that, man, I mean, I, I guess once you get on the ball field, that's what you've grown up doing. That's what you're comfortable doing. Um and you just kind of go with the flow after that, you know. Definitely before the games, though, is uh, got to get your mind off of things somehow, for sure. Do you think all the, like, travel ball and, like, PG this, PBR that, and, like, all the games you got to play set you up for more success to jump right into the spotlight? Because you weren't really even in the minor leagues for very long to be able to prepare for what you were about to get into at 21 years old. Yeah, you know, I think that – um no matter what kind of baseball you're playing growing up, just playing the game is great. Um, growing in that, learning it, just getting comfortable doing it. And, uh, you know, if you can win some tournaments and get used to, you know, get a mindset of we're going to win no matter what, that's that's really important. I think it's good to cultivate that at a young age for sure. Hmm. So, Evan, one more on this front for young players watching. Is there anything that they can do if they feel really nervous and jittery at the plate? Because like that doesn't work as well in baseball as it might if the adrenaline is off the charts in football and you just smash a dude and end up getting a fumble recovery. Yeah, you know, I think you uh, you got to be a little bit more careful now with all the new rules and the uh, you know the pitch clock and everything. But using your uh, using your timeout, you know, with some strategy, just trying to hey, if you're feeling overwhelmed if I feel myself start guessing like hey he might throw this he might throw that I'm you know I'm feeling myself getting tense you know that's definitely a good time to use your uh use your time out step out and just kind of take a breath and get your mind off of things and you know whatever plan or approach you had you know going up to the at bat before if you you know feel yourself getting off of that you want to make sure that you get mentally back in locked in with that and uh you know trust what you're going to do when you're going up there talk about a plan or approach I, I felt like you had a really good plan or approach you got the nickname Full Count Carter. I mean, you got that for a reason. So uh, what is your plan or approach? Is there, are you looking, looking for a specific pitch, a specific area, or are you just going up there saying see ball, hit ball? Yeah, so I, um, I, I've always just been somebody, I look right down the middle, um, and if it's close to being down the middle, I, I'm going to swing at it no matter what pitch it is. And if it's, if it's not right there, you know, obviously in certain situational things or, you know, two, two strikes and it changes a little bit, but definitely to start at bat, I'm, uh, I'm not going to chase. I'm going to try and look for, you know, something down the middle that I can drive. And, uh, you know, especially in the playoffs, those stuff changes, I guess, situationally, just kind of, you know, we need to score here, move this runner there. I'm um, getting a little bit more technical, but for the majority of the time, I think I'm just kind of see ball, hit ball right down the middle and go from there. 
All right, I got a few questions for you about cash. All right, so <laughs> about December 7th, 5th or 7th, did you go to the mailbox on December 5th or 7th? I, I did not. I did not. Who who found who found the uh, World Series bonus check in the mail? Then who 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 picked <laughs> hey, that out? We got we got direct deposit this year, so that was that was definitely a uh, a really really nice uh, early Christmas mm. present for sure. So I'm glad that you're going to see a financial person <laughs> to take care of all this because you got a little bit of dough when you signed too. But you know what? You, you know it costs a lot to live in the minor leagues. All that stuff. Mm -hmm. The type of player that you are, I'm picking you to be American League Rookie of the Year now that Yamamoto signed with the Dodgers. The type of player that I think you are going to be in your career based on your plate discipline that I'm trying to teach the kids that I coach in high school, like this is the guy to look at. Are you open to an extension with the Rangers, and have they talked to you about an extension? You know, I think that um... – Gosh, I mean, you never want to close any doors. Um, I, I'm, I'm definitely somebody who is, uh, I'm going to listen, I guess. Um, but no, the conversation's not been there. Um, but, you know, it's, it's just one of those things that I feel like life kind of comes at you the way it's supposed to. You know, I, I'm a big believer in that. Just whatever's supposed to happen is going to happen. So we'll just have to see kind of what comes down the road. Kratz, I'm waiting for a player that we have on, a young player, obviously a pre-art player that goes, you know what? I'm going year to year, baby. I'm going all the way to free agency, and I'm getting that Juan Soto half a billion dollar action. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Probably not going to get that from anyone. Of course, you're going to at least listen to a conversation like that. What do you think of what free agency has been so far this offseason and just in terms of how fun it's been to follow from contracts like Yamamoto and the uniqueness of Otani's mysterious free agency eventually turning into the 700 mil and the, the deferrals, just even as a fan, how much did you follow that? Yeah, it's been a, it's been a ton of fun to watch. Um, kind of get um, a little bit impatient sometimes waiting, you know, you see all the news thinking, Hey, it might, it might happen today. It might happen tomorrow. And then it doesn't. Um, but you know, I think it's, uh, it's really cool to see these people, you know, they're getting uh Gosh, I mean, that's just unbelievable that the amount of money people are getting um, and they deserve it. And I think that's really cool. Um, but it's been a ton of fun to follow. Let me ask you this. Um, your pitching staff was wonderful from Monty to Valdi um, starting there, uh, just to name two. Um, now, Monty's a free agent. Uh, I just want you to talk a little bit about, you know, what the team's looking forward to. You got DeGrom, who's not going to be ready until maybe at the end of next year. Um, you know, just to name another guy, like how, how do you feel about the pitching staff last year and how, what are you guys looking forward to this year? Yeah, you know, I the amount of time that I was there, they were absolute nails. Uh, just Monty, for example, every time he came up to pitch, I mean, gosh, it was no runs, one run, you know, it was, it was unbelievable and uh, made it really easy to play defense behind them and, you know, it made it easy on the offense too. Um, and I, I've got nothing but uh, trust for everybody on our pitching staff and I know that the front office is going to do everything they can to get us where we need to be for next year. So it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to add to this question, Evan, because this could be one of the most epic comeback situations we've ever seen. Okay. So let's picture it's August for the Rangers and you guys are in a good spot. You're in a playoff position. And then DeGrom, I think right now is scheduled to come back in August. Scherzer's scheduled to come back around mid season. They signed Tyler Malley, who I really like that arm. He's potentially going to come back in that range as well. And Clayton Kershaw is a free agent. Those rumblings are always there, too. Imagine if you have those four guys coming back in August to the Texas Rangers. We've never seen anything like that. If even the three of them that are currently on the team make a comeback like that. Yeah, that would, uh, gosh, I wouldn't want to face that. Holy cow. That's uh, that's definitely quite the, uh, quite the rotation that somebody would have to face coming in against us. So that would be, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. All right. So we had Ross Stripling on, and he was in the world. He was in the uh, All Star game with Max Scherzer, and they were on, on the way out. Max was on the way in. He was starting the game, and he goes to give him a high five, and just crickets. Got nothing. <laughs> did you or did you not, as a rookie, try to give Max a high five on a start day? So funny story. Um, the first time I was actually there when Max started, we were in Toronto, um, and Brad Miller was like, hey, man, like, here he comes, you know, dap him up, try and give him a high five. And, I, you know, I was about to. I believe Brad. Um, 
I, I, I was about to turn around, you know, you know, fire him up. Let's go. This is exciting. And then Brad's like, oh, God, no, don't touch him. Do not touch him. And I was like, oh, gosh. <laughs> Like, sorry. <laughs> He's like, no, I, I he could have thrown him to the wolves right there. He really could have, but he didn't. Um, I'm thankful. But it, it was, yeah, I've experienced that for sure. So B. Oh, Miller, that's the good B. Stuff. Miller saved you. He was, he was wow. going to throw you out there. That is a, that is a cold move, but then a great teammate. Good. Yeah. Good he, uh, he definitely <laughs> felt bad for sure. I think. <laughs> Evan, did you have any other learning situations like that emerge where you go up to the bigs for the first time? You don't know exactly all of the etiquette. There's no book mm. besides the Cardinals way book and you're on the Rangers. So did you get any tutorials that you didn't know about when you first got up to the show? You know, I think that um, there, there was a couple of young guys on there, you know, like Josh Young and Josh Smith and all of them were really good to me as far as just kind of pointing me in the right direction. And then a lot of older guys like Brad, who just were really nice about things, they'd give you a hard time. But at the same time, they're, you know, they're great people and they're great to me. Um, and gosh, you know, it's just I think that's what made our clubhouse so good this year is you've just got a good mix of young guys and veterans who are kind of all there for the same purpose. I mean, there was definitely their fair share of dress ups and doing some fun stuff, but it definitely, you know, I didn't feel didn't feel out of place at any time by any means. What was your what was your favorite? What was your favorite rookie? I don't want to use the H word hazing, but what was your favorite thing? Like, did you have to sing in the front of the bus? Did you have to dress and wear something that you thought was actually kind of fun to do yeah so we uh we i did both uh, we we dressed up in <laughs> i love canada stuff some all denim some you know some jean shorts and some jean jackets going up to toronto decked out um i i had to sing on the front of the bus um all by myself no music the whole nine yards it was uh you know you hate it in the moment but it's uh it's definitely a lot of fun <laughs> <laughs> all right i want to get to some partying so it's crazy. You haven't been up to the bigs for that long, and then you get to celebrate quite a bit. I mean, getting into the playoffs, round by round, celebrating with your teammates. How much fun was that? And I'm sure you've seen it on TV and on social media quite often growing up. Was it everything you imagined it to be, to pop bottles with big leaguers after winning what eventually became your childhood dream? Yeah, you know, it's it's one of those things you never really know what to expect. Um and then when it happens, it's just, it's, it's so much fun. I mean, that is just, that's what you dream for that. Just like you said, I mean, that's literally what you've put so much time and effort in for your entire life to be able to get to those moments. And then you get to celebrate it. And, you know, those are, those are uh, once in a lifetime up until that point, hopefully there's going to be many more to come, but definitely first experiences that you don't want to, you know, lose the memory of. So that was, uh, it's definitely something you're never going to forget. I'm glad you turned 21 so you could legally pop pop bottles. <laughs> That's right. So that, That's right. That was, I, didn't, I didn't want to get anybody arrested on the Rangers. Have you mm. looked Have you looked online for any possible like Rangers ring design, or is that something that you're just worried about your your bonus check and not what the ring is going to look like? Shoot, I got to just make sure I send in the right size, um, and I'll just be <laughs> I'll be happy to get surprised whenever it shows up. It's going to be great. Hey, hey go, go ahead, Todd. No, I was going to say, are you a football fan at all, NFL? Yeah, I, I do watch, yeah. Oh, who's your favorite team? So I am more of a player follower, so I really like Oregon, the college. So anybody that comes okay. out of Oregon is kind of who I keep up with. Um, so Justin Herbert is kind of my guy. Um, we're seeing it rough right now, but that's okay. That's yeah. okay. <laughs> so uh, the reason I'm asking, you played under Coach Sean Witten. He's the brother of Cowboys legends, Jason Witten, huh? Yep. So yep, no, that's cowboy, right, yep. no cowboy fan then. So I, I think that was just more whenever Jason Witten was there, the whole town was was on on the on the train with him. Uh, but now that he's gone, I I think that we may be out of it a little bit. Um, <laughs> there you go. But yeah, it's definitely a uh, football town for sure. That's pretty cool, man. That must have been exciting. All right, mm, so sure. we have we have a nice visual. You might want to at least put shades on for this. Um, but you said you're a fan of individuals. So what about this guy who unfortunately won't be your teammate this coming season? Austin Hedges left Texas for the big bucks in Cleveland. But did you get a visual of this at some point during your celebrating? Oh yeah, that is a, uh, that's, that's the heart of the party right there. Heart of a clubhouse, man. He was unbelievable. <laughs> wow. That is some visual there. Did you do anything by the way, aside from the celebrating with teammates like Hedgie, did you do anything with the fam or friends, like some epic dinner or something like that? Because 
I don't know. I mean, you tell me. You're 21 years old. You're excited to just get up to the bigs, then to have the mm-hmm. success, then the success in the playoffs. Then you win a World Series. I'm sure Todd Father can tell you. Like, Todd didn't win a World Series, right? Like, you could tell him, like, you got this in your first year. Is it uh, hard to grasp what just went down here and to celebrate it correctly? Oh, gosh, yeah. I feel I feel kind of spoiled just because, like we said, I mean, you know, you, Brad Miller, for example, I know I keep bringing him up, but, like, you don't really – people go their whole careers without even, you know, you might get to the yeah. playoffs once. And it's just I, – I do. I feel a little bit spoiled, but at the same time, it's just – I think it's really exciting to be on a team that is uh, hopefully going to be able to do that for the next several years. And as far as celebrating and stuff, I think it was really fun. We went out as, as a team um, and just hung out the night after. The, it was it was a lot of fun. It's, it's really cool. Yeah, that is fun. If you don't just, win, if you don't yeah. win another World Series, a would you be shocked? And b did you enjoy this one as much as you felt like you should have? Yeah, I think that I de- I definitely think I enjoyed it the way that I sh- I should have. I mean, gosh, it's there was really no wrong answers, I guess, in the moment. Um, <laughs> but as far as you know, if I think we're gonna win another one, I mean, the standard's been set. You know, I mean, it's that's what the goal is from now on. You know, every year you're, you're gonna want to win, and if you don't, you know, that's the goal for the next year. So you just got to keep trucking along. And you know, I would be I would be disappointed if we didn't win another one. But you know, at the end of the day, you can't can't control anything that happens, but, you know, we're going to make darn sure that, you know, I'll do everything I can to make it happen for sure. And hey, the Rangers have this blend going right now. So they had some down times, which obviously you weren't really a part of, but you at least got to hear about and got to witness in terms of the big league ball club, just not having success after a nice run of success, but it had been about 10 years, right? Since we talk about them being one freaking strike away from winning a World Series championship, which yeah. I'm sure you had heard of. So they did a nice job developing prospects like yourself. And I think there are quite a few pitchers uh, coming along the way on the young side for the Texas Rangers this year as well. But they also spent money in free agency with guys like Marcus Simeon and Corey Seager. So Cal Raleigh spoke about your team after the Mariners were bounced from the regular season and kind of said, I'm paraphrasing, that he was jealous, that the Rangers kind of did it all. And the Mariners had gone through this low point. They built up a really nice young core, but they haven't really gone for it to supplement their team with free agents and veterans like that. So just piling on here to how appreciative you are to be a part of this franchise now, probably for years to come, that does both because that's unique also in the game. Yeah, you know, just like what you said, I think the combination of having some some veteran guys like Marcus and Corey that really set the tone and kind of you know be like hey this is you know Corey's won before this is this is how you do it this is what winning cultures look like and then having talented young guys come up to be able to not necessarily mold to that but learn from that and be able to say hey like I'm gonna I'm gonna get behind this guy who's been there and done that and you know then you just kind of get the get the train rolling after that and I think that's a really good formula that uh CY's put together and the whole front office so uh you know, it is. It's really exciting to be in an organization like that. Who talks more, Simeon or Seager? I think I think Simeon would talk more. I think Corey is more of a, a lead-by-example type of person, and I think both are really, really valuable. All right, so your leader, the leader of the team, the manager, you get called up. Do you ever, like, catch yourself, like, staring at Bochi and being like, golly, that is a huge head? Like, I wonder what that hat would look like. Did you try Bochi's hat on at any point? And will you be more comfortable to try it on next year if you haven't? I haven't tried it on. No, that, that hat is something of legends. So it starts with an eight. Um, I don't know anybody's head that's... You know, that. um, but no, it starts <laughs> with an eight. I haven't, I haven't tried to try it on, no. You, you need to. You need to. And I, I'm not sure if you're real, like, social media savvy or anything, but you need to take that thing. Put it on. I think it's an eight and a quarter, but I'm not 100% sure. Ooh. So it's not just an eight. That's like Kevin Mensch style. Kevin Mensch is an yeah. eight. Like it's Former an Ranger. eight and a quarter. But yeah. does anybody do a good good Bochi impersonation? Like like a real like, hey, well, well, you know, Evan, I'm, I'm going to get you to – I'm gonna get you to come out and you know just try your best and everything is gonna be is gonna be great. Does anybody do a good Bochi impersonation? I think that I think that Travis Jankowski and Brad Miller are kind of our go-to impersonators on the team. Um, they're, they're, those are two really good ones. Hey, <laughs> Evan, you're a car guy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, 
give me the lowdown because I'm I'm not. I don't have much info there. So like, tell me what you like. Tell me if you have a dream car that maybe the playoff share goes to. If not, something that you look <laughs> forward to in the future. Yeah, I think that um, cars are expensive, um, <laughs> and so for now, we're you know nothing nothing's on the radar. Um, but you know. <laughs> Uh, as far as a dream car goes, you know, the Porsche 911, uh, which Nate Lowe does have, he has my dream car, um, would be what I would want. Um, but that is definitely, definitely not in the sights right now, I don't think. <laughs> not after the meeting, not, not after the after meeting the you meeting. just had. That guy, no. whoever, that guy or girl no. that just met with you does not want to hear the words cars, does not want to hear no. your, like, what are your hobbies? Do you like to fish? Do you like to golf? Yeah. We can set aside a little bit of money for your golfing and fishing, not yeah. your Porsche 911 or your <laughs> no. or, or your right. six seated C class, whatever you want. Yeah, gosh, did you get to drive it though? So he kept telling me that I could, and I am just that I would be scared to death to get in that thing and drive somebody else's car. And if somebody hit me or I hit, I no, I, I would not get caught behind the wheel of somebody else's car like that. I don't think. Come on. But it is beautiful to look at. You got to at least do like some parking lot action or something where you feel really <laughs> comfortable. There's no one around you. You get rid of all of the outside elements of idiot drivers. Gosh, see, I would want to rip it. I would I would want to go out there and really appreciate it for what it's for. And then I would end yes. up getting in trouble. Yes. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't you yeah. wouldn't go into you wouldn't you wouldn't bring a visitor into the clubhouse and be like, hey, you want to hit BP? And then like yeah. give them one of the pitcher's bats. The pitchers <laughs> still get bats. No, they want to take. They want to get the Corey Seager bat, the Evan Carter bat, and, like, take this thing for a test drive. So there's tons of six-lane highways out there and <laughs> around Arlington. Give it a little that's rip. Right. Yeah, It'll buy, right. buy another one. <laughs> You're full count Carter. You had a 900-plus OPS in the postseason. <laughs> Come on. <Gosh. laughs> uh, Evan, uh, so last one from me. I'm wondering for you – if your life has changed at all since all of this has happened so fast. So you have your old friends, but have you made any new friends aside from your teammates, especially with winning a World Series? Any famous Ranger fans or just, you know, friends around town where suddenly, I don't know, there's a country music singer that's just on speed dial and you're going out to dinner with him. So any cool big league perks? You know, I don't think that as far as like going out to eat with people or anything like that, I haven't done that, but it has been really cool to just have some some people that reach out and, you know, tell you congratulations and things like that. I, it's really cool, especially in the Dallas area, how many people support sports in that area. Um, and, you know, it's just, it's one of those things that you want to keep it, keep it as a proud place to be there. You know, I want the whole area and the whole community to be proud of the baseball team and kind of what we're bringing to the table. So hopefully we can uh, keep it going next year. All right. So you're married now for a full year. Yep. I got married. I got married at a young age. Also, I was twenty-one. You were twenty. So, what is what is that like for her? Going from, yeah, you might get called up to, holy crap, we are almost going to watch my husband win the World Series. Yeah, you know, I gosh, it's been a whirlwind, and I mean, as as much as she supports me, I mean, she's as big a part of it as anybody. You know, helping me out. You know, with packing bags and making me, you know, keeping me fed and all this stuff. I mean, she does so much for me, making my life easier. Um, you know, I, I couldn't ask for any better. And, you know, a whole year, this has been a crazy year. You know, you get married, you get called up. It's just, it's a whole, this has been a crazy first year of marriage for sure, but I wouldn't trade it for anything. Did you buy her anything with the, with the signing bonus? I mean, that bonus, listen, she doesn't get to see you <laughs> but 81 days a year. I mean, she might come to Chicago. She might come to places she likes to shop at. But did you get her anything? Because that signing bonus, I mean, it might be a Louis life for her now. <laughs> Shoot, we uh, we um, we went to Europe for our one year uh, anniversary. So we went on a cruise in Europe. So if that counts as is buying something, we went on an anniversary trip. So that was a ton of fun. Was that, that for her count. or was that for you? Both. Both. It was for both <laughs> of us. It was for both so of us. So she needs a gift, Evan. I'm telling you, man. I'm, <laughs> I just celebrated 22 years. She needs a gift. Don't I'm do not it. Saying don't. I'm not saying make it big. I'm saying she needs something <laughs> that's like my blame, Evan got me this. Blame it on the financial guy. I got oh. you. Yeah, there we go. 
<laughs> okay, so you're going to be off the show for this, and I want to surprise people, but we'll send it to you afterward. Like, I just followed you on Insta, so we'll let you know. But Todd Father has a very unique gift that we're going to run at the end of the show. It's a musical gift. So I'm just going to give that, that hint. That would be a good I'm gift. Gonna it, it it's going to touch your heart there we a little go. bit. Yeah. Right, it's going to touch awesome. the heart. I'll be looking forward to seeing it. It's super unique. But gotta, Evan, dude, great. got to hear it. That's all. Yeah, you got to hear it. It's all, it's all audio. Um, Evan, nice. great to have you on, dude. Awesome to make your FT Live debut here. Hope you enjoyed it. And congratulations on, on a great first few months, really, in the bigs. And we'll see you in spring training, man. Enjoy the offseason. Awesome. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Carter, Thank you. Happy are you, holidays. Are you still did we did we cut him off? Are you still there? No. What? There. I'm still here. Still here. Okay. You need to text Brad Miller and a Christmas <laughs> gift. Tell him you were just on the show with the guy that poured milk on him. <laughs> but tell him to tell you the story about pouring the milk on him, okay? I, I think he's already told me the story of you pouring <laughs> milk on him, actually. <laughs> so I can't give the I can't give the story away because oh, no, I've been trying no, 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 to get no. him on the show okay. to talk about it, and he has just he has ghosted me. Because we have to get on the show to talk about the mm -hmm. time that we took care of his issue with the milk. Yeah, no, he uh, he he brought it up because whenever I got my first hit, they uh, poured a whole bunch of stuff on me, um, <laughs> shopping cart through the oh, yeah. through, the, oh, through yeah. the locker room. So yeah, no yeah. doubt, lactose assassin. All right, we'll get him at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Evan. Cheers, man. We'll talk soon. Awesome, y'all have a good one.